now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Here's how he sings. Hey, live from New York in Harlem, it's the Ramble with Alex Bennett. We keep going until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Larry Bowles Brown. Last time we were talking to him, we mentioned William Holden, and you remember the Stephen Pearl joke? Yes, because uh, he don't. <laughs> He was doing a PSA, don't drink and walk at the same time. Because <laughs> in case people didn't hear that, William Holden died at his home, drunk, falling down, hitting his head on the edge of a glass coffee table, once owned by Danny Thomas, on a, <laughs> on a glass coffee table, and uh, uh, bled to death or yeah. had a concussion or whatever, and they found him at home dead. Yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, Good actor, by the way. Very, you know, a, a serviceable actor. You could just, you could give him the script and he could play anything. You know? That was very, he was very good. I always liked William Holden. He was in, he was in my first movie where I got a sexual urge. Do you remember the first movie you ever saw that gave you a sexual urge? Uh, Be Dazzled with Raquel Welch. Okay. See, a good one. Can't argue with that. No. She she was hot. Oh my God! Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, I'm surprised you didn't say Doctor No with uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, oh, Ursula Andress. Ursula yeah, Andress. Uh, when she comes out of that water, do you know they? Yeah, that was incredible. You know they didn't. I don't think they used her voice in that picture. It was dubbed. Because she just had uh, she, uh, either she had an accent, I think, is what the problem was. Yeah, and uh, they, so they they had a, just an American actress dub in her voice. But who needed her voice dubbed in? They didn't dub in her body, and that was fine with me, you know. She was but anyway, amazing. Well, my first sexual thing was the movie Picnic. Did you ever see the movie Picnic? Uh, <laughs> that's with. Uh, don't tell me that's with. Uh... She's the daughter of famous at Strasburg. Susan well, no, she Susan? played she played the daughter in the film. She plays the nerdy girl, right? The, the, she plays the daughter in the film. But yeah. the, but uh, who plays the woman in that film? The, 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 I the don't remember. Uh, William Holden is in that film. He's the star of the film. Uh, as long as we're talking about William Holden, um, uh, it was Kim Novak. Oh yeah, she was. And they have this. They play Moonglow and the theme from Picnic at the same time, and they're out dancing, right, very sexually with each other. That gave me my first movie hard on. Kim Novak, which dancing with William Holden, yeah, yeah. We didn't, uh, as I seem to recall, didn't didn't we? You have Kim Novak in the studio for an interview. Certainly did. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't bring that up to her, though. You know, I don't think I did. I have the interview, and actually I play it sometimes on the weekends here, and I've never gone back and listened to the interview. And I'm wondering if I did. I don't think so. I should have. I would have today. You know? But she was... Uh, she was... Uh, she was hot. She was really... She was, hot. and she did... She didn't do that many movies, though, right? Well, she wasn't a very good actress. Be honest. Okay. With you. you know, but th that wasn't why I liked her. I mean, I loved her in Vertigo. Um, Hitch Hitchcock hated her in Vertigo. He didn't really want her. Uh, but the first choice he had, which was, uh, oh, what's her name? The woman who played the sister in Psycho. Uh, oh, yeah, Janet Leigh. Huh? Janet Lee. No, not Janet Lee. The one who played her sister. Who goes oh, out to find her? Was, yeah, I know who you mean. Uh, okay, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me look up Psycho. God bless it. I'm terrible at remembering names today. It's not my day for name. Oh, I've names never always elude me. Really? 
You, with, yeah. with your memory, names always elude you. Well, there is I'm some... Ter- I'm terrible in names. I feel wonderful about that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see here. Names. Um, okay, Psycho. Uh, this is a Psycho from 1960, and it is um, Vera Miles. Vera Miles, okay. Yeah, Vera Miles was uh, the... Uh, Sit, play the sister Kim Novak, uh, Kim Novak of uh, Janet Lee in Psycho. She also was supposed to be the star of Vertigo, but she died. She didn't die. She got pregnant, got and had a ba- baby, and she wasn't available for the picture. Okay. Oh. Uh, plus, I don't think Hitch wanted a pregnant woman to play. The main woman in Psycho, so he got Jan- he got Kim Novak, and I think she was perfect for the part. I thought she always worked beautifully in that film. Um, but nevertheless, that that was the uh, so Vera, Vera Miles actually was Hitchcock's favorite female actress. But really, he, yeah, uh, but she never really appeared as a major star of his films. But he always liked her; thought she was terrific. Well, how does the director, if if you got an actor that's a bad actor, how does the director deal with that? Well, uh, then you then you're called upon to direct. You shoot you know, around them. <laughs> I mean, if you've got a really good actor, you don't need to direct them. They know what right. to do instinctively. But bad actors, bad actresses, need to be. You need to coddle them. You need to motivate them. You need to say, now in this t- scene, you're supposed to be such and such. So think of blah blah blah. You know, uh, a director to me is always has to pet play psychologist. You know, yeah. If you have an actor who's who's a great actor, you leave them alone. They know what they're gonna have to do. But if you don't have a great actor, then you've got to work with them. And uh, I don't think Hitchcock liked working with actors much, to be very honest with you. Uh, and he wrote a script, and he made you read every line like it was written. You don't veer from it, you know. So, And he had most of the film shot and edited in his mind before the film ever went before the cameras. So, yeah. Enough about hey. Hitchcock. <laughs> So, hey, he shot. Huh? You must have been around San Francisco when they shot birds. Um, no, I wasn't. I don't think no. so. Maybe I was. No, it, that was up north. They shot that up in uh, Bodega Bay. But they did shoot a few scenes in Union Square. Oh yeah, yeah. It's in, in the opening of the film, uh, where she comes out with the birds or something. I don't know. The, it, Hitch, it's also the one shot where Hitchcock shows up. It's a very yeah, is that, uh, was that tacky that he would do that in all his films? No, I, I think it was like a, a trademark, a signature, uh-huh. like a, a guy, <laughs> guy putting it. It's a, so weird. Well, it's like, a, like an artist putting his signature on a painting. Is that ridiculous and horrible? No. <laughs> you know, Maybe a little egotistical, but... Just... Uh, he was very good at that, too. I mean, in the beginning, he, in the, he'd do it in the middle of the film. You know, and nobody knew who Alfred Hitchcock was, so it didn't really matter. But as people began to see that he showed up in his films, they started waiting for him. And, you know, they would watch every scene intently, and they, oh, there's Hitchcock, you know. And he finally started moving them all to the beginning of the film because he didn't want people distracted looking for him yeah. and have it ruin the film. So he... You know, Vertigo, I think he's walking in front of a building that Jimmy Stewart's supposed to go in to get a job. It's very early in the film. North by Northwest, he's in the credits. He tries to catch a bus, and, you know, uh, the, 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 the bus doors close on him. But he, And he gets it out of the way early, and then everybody goes, well, now we can enjoy the film, you know. So that became an impediment after all. I'm very. I was. That was something I was very good in. I I was on a, some kind of game show, and the, the the topic was Hitchcock in Hitchcock films, and you had to identify when they named a film. You had to identify where he was in that film, and I I aced it. 
just and you I didn't even know I knew, yeah, I didn't even know I knew that much about it, but I aced it. <laughs> you know, where is he in Psycho? In Psycho, let me think. Uh, I can't recall. Well, she works in an office, in a real estate office, I think. A bank. A bank. Is it a bank or a real estate office? I think it's a real estate office, if I'm not mistaken. She's supposed to take the money that's given to her to the bank. Oh, maybe that's it. Just right. Yeah. 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 Big, uh, car, big uh, pile of money, and she leaves town. But they show the first time she's in the office, and there's a window, and standing outside the window is Hitchcock. Okay. So, that, see, I'm very good at this stuff. I was a little kid when I saw that movie. It really scared me. Oh, it's a scary film. Still a scary film. You know, it was the first, that was the first slasher film. Yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> no, it was the, no, it was the first slasher film. Uh, and, it, you know, I, I think it was maybe the last great film he made. Uh, Very low budget. He did it with his TV crew. You know, he brought it in for something like, I don't know, $300,000. And the next time he went to make a movie, a Universal said, can you do that again? <laughs> you know, that, that, he did it for Paramount, but then he went to Universal. And they said, can you do that again? Can you bring it in that cheaply? And he said, no, I'm never making another movie like that again. And he didn't because he knew that what happened was he made it. He, he did it as an experiment to see if he could use his TV crew, if he could, because they worked fast and see if he could make a movie in a short amount of time and very cheaply, just to see if he could do it. And he did it. And it was the most successful film I think he ever had financially. And they were um, uh, uh, they wanted him to do that again, and he went, no, I'm never going to do that again. And he went on to making movies that cost a couple million bucks, you know. But uh, it, that, that movie almost ruined his career in that respect. And then everybody kind of thought, okay, now he's going to do more what they call horror films, but it wasn't a horror film. To him, it was at that time when he did it, it was just a mystery, you know, just a suspense mm -hmm. film. Um, but it was the first slasher film. And so he did do The Birds, and everybody said, oh, he's back to that again, he's, you know. And I didn't think that was a very good movie. I thought, I thought that was subpar for him. Yeah, I not... Uh... You know. And then he went on did a whole bunch of stuff when he when he got that universal contract. You know what happened when he got the universal contract? Am I talking too much? No, when, I love it. When he got the universal contract, they gave him, I think, something like 60% of the universal stock to Holy come Christ. over. He was the large, let me put it this way, he became the largest single stockholder in universal. Um and he went over there after leaving Paramount, where he had been, and he, the, like the last five films he did, he owned, including Psycho. So he just brought them over to Universal. And if you see them now, they have a Universal opening and then the Paramount logo. Uh, and he uh, went over to Universal, brought those films with him. Lucky he did, because everything else he did after that just sucked. You know, it was like he, he never made a great film for Universal. They made Marnie. He made The Birds. The Birds was successful, I think, uh, because they wanted another horror film out of him. Uh -huh. But then he did uh, Topaz. And, uh, I mean, I can name them all. They're just crappy films. Mar Marnie and Topaz are pretty bad. M yeah, Marnie, Marnie's really bad. Um, you know, uh, it, it, uh, so, I mean, he didn't, he, he, he slowed down. And if you go to his last film, was which was uh, not Frenzy, it was uh, oh, the one with the of the uh, the spiritualist, the mind reader. I'm trying to remember uh, the name of it right now. It, that film is just terrible, and and it also shows that he didn't have. You know, I, I, as as directors get older, their films are less. Um, uh, they move less. You know what I'm saying. In other words, they don't have mobility. So their films have, lack a certain amount of mobility. And so everything's kind of a static shot. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. He, where before he would go to low shots, high shots, this shot, that shot. 
he he it was more like set up the camera here you know and shoot it so i think that his lack of mobility was inherent in his films Does that make sense yeah yeah um, which um yeah we'll have to watch uh, clint eastwood still directing at 90 and check out and see if his films have slowed down yeah yeah well he's the i think he's the oldest director alive if not mistaken he's gotta be yeah yeah do you know quickly you know who the oldest actor is in sag uh there's a guy that's like 107 isn't 105 it? norman lloyd he, he always played the cranky, like, like 60 years ago, he played a cranky old guy. It, uh, do you remember uh, Foreign Correspondent by Hitchcock? Uh, not Foreign Correspondent, uh, uh, um, a saboteur, a saboteur? No, I've never uh, seen that one. Saboteur, where the guy falls off of the Statue of Liberty, the bad I've guy? I've seen that. Well, that's the guy who falls off the Statue of Liberty is Norman Lloyd. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You never saw that picture? You never saw this? I know. That's a classic. I Saboteur? You've got to see Saboteur. It's just, it's one of the great Hitchcock films, in my opinion. Yeah. Anyway. Hey, listen, we've run out of time. Yeah. Uh, man, but, I wish you, you and Mort Saul talking about movies would be like, that would be a great show. Yeah. Yeah. Mort Saul, still alive, right? Still alive. How 93. old? How, 93. Mm-hmm. Wow. Oh, boy. I never had him on my show. I probably should have. You should. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, hey, thank you, Bub- oh, Bubbles. Oh, this is fun. Thanks. Yeah, we'll do this again next week. You got it. Yeah. Larry Bubbles Brown, everybody. Hey, Alex. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ta-da. Anyway, uh, thank you, Larry. Always like talking to Larry Bubbles Brown. He, he gets me talking. Is what he does. I should get people talking, but no, he gets me talking. I got some stuff on my hand here. You know, he, I've gotten arthritis right here. Terrible. So, I'm just a crotchety old man. You know, we haven't done in a long time, and I figured I'd just bring it up and we'd, uh, we'd do it because, uh, after all, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's the world as we see it. We have not looked at our map from. Uh, uh, from, uh, let me see here, from, uh, who did this again? Uh, Johns Hopkins University. Uh, anyway, let's go to the map. We'll take a look at it, just quickly. Uh, you know, because, uh, look at this. The U.S., number one in the amount of COVID deaths, okay? That's death. Oh, excuse me, excuse me, cases. We're also number one in deaths, but we can get to that later. No, no use jumping the gun. See all the red we've got here? Wait a minute. Oh, damn it. This thing always goes in and out on me, and I can't, I can't freeze it, and it causes a real problem here. But look at, look at this in the United States. If you look at us and then look at the rest of the world, here we go. There we go. I got it going. Uh, you look at the rest of the world, uh, we've got, we are the hot spot in the world. Then in South America, we got some hot spots down there. And then you got Europe. But you go over to China, very little, okay? Uh, Soviet Union, uh, we think they're reporting it all wrong, actually, to be honest with you. Uh, but it looks like there's nothing there. Um, get back to North America, uh, Canada, uh, excuse me, Canada's very, very sparse. You know, it's that only in the major living areas. Uh, I imagine our old friend Revelstoke Jim up in Revelstoke, British Columbia, is probably pretty safe. Doesn't look like there's probably a lot of stuff up in his neck of the woods. Uh, and do you notice that it, when you see, look here, look at this line here. That's our border between us and Canada. Look how it just changes, right? Boy, amazing. Uh, so far, uh, cases U.S., Brazil, India. See, all this has changed. India. Russia, the United Kingdom, France, Spain, Italy, Turkey, and then we go down to Germany, and then we start getting down to the one millions and so on, and uh, they're, they're doing okay. Here in the United States, let me bring up the U.S. here. Uh, here is the U.S. Uh, if we go over here uh, in total test results, number one in the country, 
You know, New York used to be number one, but we're not anymore. We are surpassed by California by about 10 million cases, okay? And then you got New York, and the reason we got such a high number is because we got a head start on everybody else. Florida, Texas, with 20,169,000. You can expect that to go up precipitously. Why? Well, of course, for a very simple reason. They no masks. They're letting people go indoors and and all of that. So anyway, it's just you know. And then we got uh, we got Illinois and Massachusetts, New Jersey, Pennsylvania. Who's on the bottom? Who's on the bottom? Who's on the bottom? Hawaii, not a lot. Um, American Samoa. That's the place to live, ladies and gentlemen. American Samoa. Um, but uh, it's, it's amazing. The, 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 these are the total test results in the United States. Anyway, we, uh, we don't do too well. We're not doing that well. And it's not good. So anyway, it's still, you know, I mean, yeah, it's getting better, you know, but it's not let's get really uh, frisky better. Uh, and uh, let me see here. I got to close this down. There we go. I'm, I have to. I, I do everything here. Okay, everything. Let me see here. Where do we go? Okay, here we go. There we go. All right. Now we're fine. Uh, um, I. You know. I mean, we're 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 doing we're doing better, but we ain't doing great. You know. Our president last night, as he said, you know, it's important for us to keep on our game. Not uh, not change it. I just hit my mic. Oh, listen to that. Isn't that nice? Uh, <laughs> I didn't know that microphone <laughs> could make that kind of noise. Oh boy. Well, let me go to the uh, let me go to the citizen panel, of which there are only a couple of people who are currently uh, involved in it. Uh, so let me, uh, I just uh, said admit all, and they're admitting all. Here we go. There they are. So far we got uh, Trucker Steve out there in his truck. Where are you tonight, Trucker Steve? Uh, Amarillo. Amarillo? Okay. Uh, and uh, let's see here. Hello, Jeff. How are you? He doesn't, his mic isn't on, Jeff. Your mic isn't on. So uh, get settled in there and turn your mic on. Uh, and, of course, we've got the lovely and attractive Charlie Wallace and uh, nobody else tonight. Wow. Or maybe maybe it's just that they, you know what it is? I think they, they expect that I'm going to, you know, not start this early. Oh, now we just lost. uh Ooh, Steve. Steve. Okay. Well, anyway. Uh, no, we didn't lose Trucker Steve. We lost Trucker Carlson. No, uh, uh, here comes Josh Wheeler. Uh, we jo lost uh, uh, Jeff. 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 Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, here comes here comes Josh. Hello, Josh. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing fine. Yeah, yeah. He's always excited to be here. He <laughs> he's like, yeah. I'm happy to be here. Really happy to be here. Um. How's it in your neck of the woods? Everything going on okay? I mean, are you how how's the whole COVID in your area tonight? Hmm? Me? Yeah, you. Yeah. Was it for me? You broke up when you had who were you? Okay, I couldn't hear you. You were asking you broke up when you started that. I was just asking you how it is in your That's good neck of the as woods. As far as I can tell. Yeah? Okay. Hey, you it's, have it uh, Huh? I think it's How's that? Yeah. You you haven't opened up yet, have you? I mean, like the other, some of the other states, or have you? No, uh, it's 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 a little bit more, but no, it's basically about the same as it's been for the last yeah. six months. Yeah, you mean the yeah. cases are down, but nothing's really nothing's really. I, opened I keep up. forget a little bit. Maybe. Excuse me, I forget what city you're in again. You're in. Well, I, I live in a really small village, basically, mm -hmm. uh, that's really tiny, but it's it's about a 25-minute drive uh, south of Columbus, Ohio. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, you know, and I bet... Which, that's a major 
population. Is it pretty safe in your area? Yeah, it's it's pretty good. Yeah, good. Yeah, I mean, I I think it's uh, it was fairly bad there for a while because a lot of the rural areas in America were actually you know some of the hardest hit, almost like the large metropolis. You, you would think you would think they sort would, of like yeah. that here in, in this county for a while. You would you would think they What's would that? they would you would think they would be the least hit. Because you know they're they're away from everybody yeah, else. Right. They're not a dense population center, so it's surprising when you say it was not good there. You know, I, I was trying to figure yeah, out. Yeah, it wasn't. Wow. Yeah, uh, I was trying to figure out what. Yeah, brain, there. I, I, is there a delay between us or something? No, I mean it, there might be. I can't tell. Go, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. No, what I was going to say is. Um, uh, it's just amazing to me that a small city like yours would be impacted. I would think you could go to certain places and not get anywhere near this. I, I would have thought, I, I was looking for what was the safest place in America to live in the last year. And uh, outside of Alaska looks pretty good, you know. But it's not... It, Maine. Hmm? Yeah. But then again... I who think the, Maine. Maine? What, they were really low in, in, in incidences? I think I heard that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna wait a minute. Let me look here. What do What do we have for me? Let me see. Go. Yeah. Go ahead. I, I suppose it's I suppose it's possible. You know that one of the reasons it's like that, at least here and maybe some other places too, is that there's not really a lot of you know career type employment in the very mm -hmm. rural small area that I live in. Mm -hmm. So almost everyone that lives around here travels to, for instance, Columbus, mm -hmm. the closest major city for work, and then, you know, every day, and then intermingles with everybody in that large area. Yeah. Um, you know, and then comes back to what we consider uh, the real America yeah. every night after work. And, uh, you know, maybe that's how it kind of... So I don't know that... I don't know that the spread was taking place here, you know, mm -hmm. and, and like where we live, but it was happening where everyone goes to work. Maybe. I mean, I don't have any yeah. like evidence or yeah. anything, but maybe that's the reason. Yeah. Hello, Kevin. How are you this evening? Hi, Alex. How you doing? Good. Hi, Good. Um, um, listen, I want to talk to you about something, uh, and it's something we brought up a couple of nights ago. It just seems to be getting worse and worse for him. Uh, and that's what's happening to um, Andrew Cuomo. Um, and um, uh, I want to I want to get your some of your thinking on it. I mean, I am I'm a little dismayed by people like Chuck Schumer and uh, Kirsten Gillibrand, people like that. These politicians who are now ganging up on Cuomo and asking him to resign based upon just insinuations. I mean, no lie detector tests, no, no proof of anything, just an, al a, 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 an allegation. And I guess today, if a woman makes an allegation, we just immediately, especially if you're a politician, you believe her. But, you know, what makes him any more honest than anybody else? Uh, uh, he, uh, in, a, in a speech today that he gave, not a speech, but a teleconference he was giving, said, hey, you know, just wait. I, there, there are two investigations going on. Let these investigations happen. Let's find out what they say. And um, uh, uh, just wait until we find out what they had to say and then make your judgment. But that it's irresponsible of any politician to judge me before they've heard the facts and before they've gotten the determination by these investigative groups. How do you, how do you guys feel about that? I mean, you're our, our legal scholar, uh, uh, Josh. I mean, how do you feel about it when you hear these people like Schumer and Gillibrand going, yeah, you should resign, and yet they don't even know the facts? Oh, I'm not a fan of either one one of those people in particular. Yeah, uh, neither am I. A great fan. I mean, yeah. Gillibrand is okay. I'm certainly not a fan of Schumer. But regardless of who said it, I mean, I, I've never been a really big fan of 
so and so should resign. You know, they're suddenly disqualified from wait, wait, serving hold, hold on. or from running. Uh, uh, Alan, uh, is it you that's making all that noise? Huh? Yeah, is, is that you, Alan, that's making that noise? No, it's it, it. Who's moving crinkling papers? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, uh, anyway, go ahead now, Josh. I'm sorry. I, I was on mute just now, and the the crinkling papers was going on. Oh, okay, might have been Kevin. I don't know, but anyway. Uh, yes, Josh. Continue, please. I just didn't. I wanted you to be heard, and then that was kind of annoying, at least yeah, to, okay. to listen to. Yeah. I mean, I've I've never really been a big fan of that. I'm not saying it's never called for or necessary, but I mean, there are mechanisms to remove people. You know, if, if the voters choose or or the legislatures choose, and they're the representatives of the people. You know, so if they feel it's that big a deal, then let them go down that road, right? You know, but I've never, I don't really particularly like that. I mean, I'm not a fan of, of Cuomo, but I will say this, you know, if he says that he's innocent and that these are lies and the other women say he did it and that they're telling the truth, well, so now we have two people and they have different sides of the same stories. So we have to do this like we would a, a, a legal case in some ways. We have to hear both sides, and we have to weigh the evidence, and we have to decide. Now, yeah, you know, you have people like... I'm starting to really... What's that? You have people like Nadler, for instance, who have asked him to resign. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are politicians who don't e aren't even really armed with the facts. In fact, we don't know what the mm -hmm. facts are. That's why they form these two mm -hmm. groups that are investigating it. And I just think yeah. it's premature and, I, and horrible to just tell this guy's got to resign before they have, you know, they can hear the proof. I hate these things these right. days. Be, well, but I hate these things these days because there's there's no testimony. There's no testimony under oath, you know, where they could perjure themselves if they lied. Oops. We don't have any of that. These mm -hmm. women just said he did that to me. It, they could be lying through their teeth, yeah. and it doesn't matter because they're not under oath, you know. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, there's, there's good points to that. I mean, so I guess what I'm saying is is I'm trying to be fair because I've always looked at it that way. Now, so, like, personally, for example, uh, I'm pretty much leaning toward the fact that I don't, I don't really know that I believe. Andrew Cuomo. I mean, I I lean pretty strongly toward the fact that he probably is a sexual harasser. I mean, I don't know that he's a rapist or a sexual assaulter or anything, you know, of incredibly serious. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to say sexual harassment isn't serious, but I'm I'm just saying that. But I, I do think he's a person who probably, in the time that we live in, does not act well around women. But I don't have. Proof of that. That's I think my, this is. I'll, t I'll tell you. I think that's this, what I read on it from what I see on the news. So if that's mm -hmm. manipulated, you know, I think that's a bad this read is. By me, I, guess. I so, think right now this yeah. is a case of the fact that Cuomo is not supposed to be a terribly nice guy. He's a bully. He's yeah. uh, he's always in your face. He's supposedly very difficult to work with, and so he has built up over the years right. any number of enemies, who are now just piling on to get him. For something that he probably shouldn't be gotten for. Uh, Let's also consider who's the one, who's the, who are the two that are whining the most? Schumer, Nadler, they're the, always first in line to do that uh, shit. Also, Kirsten Gillibrand, she's and the one Gillibrand, that... Gillibrand, yeah, they're the took, ones that are she took, always wanting yeah. to eat their own. She took <laughs> uh, Al Franken down. That's why I will never vote for her in this state again. That, that's exactly what I mean. I mean, those 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 three right there are, are, are first in line to start picking on their own people without evidence yeah i mean you know they're, they're the ones that are out there you know neener 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 god forbid it, something it, happens to them yeah. well it doesn't hurt for them to say hey let's wait and see what these these investigations turn no, up it doesn't let's hurt not be to quick to judge not yeah and they don't say that they don't say that and i mean look and i understand that you know, people will say, well, just because the other side got away with it doesn't I mean we can't and all that and everything. And, I, and I'm open to all that. But I'm just telling you that, look, 
We got done on tape. I mean, we don't need a evidence or a trial or witness. I mean, he's on fucking tape doing shit that is just as bad, if not worse, than what Cuomo's yeah. been accused of, and everyone's fine with that. So, even though I don't like Cuomo, if he came out tomorrow and was like, yeah, motherfucker, I did it. I well, did it all. Well, you, like, well, you know, I mean, mo most, most of these women who have charged him have charged him with, with making them feel uncomfortable. Yeah. You know, I don't know that I find that actionable, okay? And now there was one that did, came by and said that he asked, uh, has, has come through, through, and he said to her, would you please come to my home or whatever, and I need help with my phone, my, my iPhone. And so she came over, and then he went under her blouse and groped her breasts. And I figure his excuse should be, I lost my iPhone, and I thought maybe she had it. Yeah. You know, I mean, I just, I, I just, I, I mean, I, but that's the worst. That's the worst part of it. And how many of us guys, okay, um, except uh, for uh, 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 Tony, because we don't know what his sexual history is, and I quite frankly don't want to know. Um, uh how many of us haven't, like, you know, in being amorous and stuff, gone under the blouse, okay, in making out? Most of us have. Are you talking about with your hand or with your... With your, with your, with, with your hand. Yeah, with your How hand. Are governors? Well, yeah. that, 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 that's None. a whole different story. It doesn't mean... It's a different mean, story, but it's, that's the story. Right. Hey, look, I, I think governors, more than anybody, need to get laid so they well, don't, I, don't do well, something terrible to us as compensation. You know, as a person, yes, I agree, but but that that's not the point. <laughs> yeah, I know. Look, look, I'll say the guy was stupid. If if any of these things are true, yeah, you know, even if the sexual conversation once took take, place, once you take that office, you got to put that shit behind you. It, it, well, it, yeah. it, certainly in this present day and age, I I would say a few years I back, done it years ago. Well, you know, he is. A, yeah, like, listen, I mean, yeah, I mean that's that's my point is. Just so, like, people listening, I can be clear to them. I am not going to defend Andrew Cuomo. I'm not. No. And I really don't like him. I mean, it's not a personal dislike. or what. I, I don't like his style, his leadership, his behavior. I, I'm not going to defend him, and I don't like him. So I guess what my point was, but I, I would agree with you in that I don't like this modern-day process of so and so is employed or is in this position of power, and at any given day, someone can show up and say, "Hey, this one time he did this, that, or the other," and suddenly it's all oh, he's completely disqualified from. You know, we're just erasing him. He's done. Well, he, I, yeah. I don't really like that. I'll tell you what this heralds you back know, to this, to me. What this is strangely reminiscent of to me was when I grew up was the McCarthy era in which somebody would be hauled before the committee and asked, are you now or have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? And if he invoked his legal rights that I refused to testify on the grounds that it might tend to incriminate me, they never worked again in Hollywood. Come on. Right. You know, and, and this is similar to that. Yeah, if somebody's guilty of something, then prove it. Then sh uh, do an investigation, find out if he did it, and if he did it, then you can say, okay, so, I think he should resign. So, uh, so I would agree. I mean, you know, that's what I'm saying. I mean, i not a Cuomo fan. I mean, I certainly is a lot of smoke there. So I sense that there's probably a fire, if you will. But, yeah, but I don't like this process that we find ourselves in. I, I guess it's... Cancel culture. There's the hit word well, for it or whatever. You know what? I'll tell you something. I'll, I'll tell you whatever. But I, yeah. I, I don't like it. I'll tell you yeah. something here that, that that gets to me, is that the far bigger story is what happened at the nursing homes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we seen right. that seems to have worked its way out of the news because they're so into these seven women who have accused the governor of improprieties. But they are dragging that into it. They're dragging it into it but not like they're dragging these other things into it. And these other things, I don't think, come to the level of, of problems and being pro problematical is a nursing home thing. Yes, Alan? 
I'm sorry, I just scratched my hand. I think the accusation... Wait a minute, turn your mic down, will you? You've got it really it's too hot. Again? Yeah, it's really hot. Yeah. Wow. To where it's uh, distorting. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, maybe it's your side. You ever thought no, about that? No, it's not. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> because I, they all hear it, too. It is all the way up again. What the hell happened? Hold yeah. Is that what? Is that better? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a little... Yeah. Turn it up just a tad. Just a tad. Okay, well, it's, it's, I'll turn it even lower. No, 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 no. Turn well, it up no, a little no. bit. Turn it up a little bit. Okay, so in, in politics, mm -hmm. yeah. the accusation is just as bad as it is the criminal side, I think. And so the accusers are accusing him, and it's pretty hard for him to... I mean, he, he's going to deny it. Everybody denies it yeah. until you get to court. But I think the accusations are just as damaging as the court can be when you're a politician. Well, you know, I mean, I um, I would never accuse him I would, uh, of any of these things. I would say, okay, let's hear what they find out. You know, yeah. somebody take a polygraph test. Somebody give a sworn statement under oath. None of them have given a sworn statement under oath. You know, it's so, part of the investigation, so they should be doing the investigation and, and letting it happen. I mean, exactly. that's, that's the problem. Exactly. But, but you I'm, took this to, it's the same thing, you know, it's, it's, you put it to the level of a corporate job, you know, it could be the same thing. An employee going into his boss and saying, you know, he molested me. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. what do they do? They're going to fire the guy right away? No, they're going to do an investigation. Well, I it's had, the same I had, thing. I had something happen to me years ago. Where um, I was, uh, we went to the uh, Olympics in in Albert in uh, Lillehammer, and I took my newswoman with me, and we did our show from there. And this one night that we were there, uh, I got really mad at at her, at my producer, at my newswoman, and we were having a yelling, screaming fight out in the out in the hallway. And then after it was over, we made up. You know, because I mean, you, you work together. Sometimes you have arguments. All right, and we had both been traveling, and uh, we had all kinds of problems when we landed in Nor in Norway, and uh, you know, by being I was I was strip searched. Oh, okay, wow. yeah. So I was cranky, and she was not the be in the best of condition, and she had this roommate, and so we were yelling and screaming. The next day, I come in to work. And the people from Coca-Cola take me down into the basement with a security guy. And I they say, we heard that you hit Lori Thompson last night in the hallway. And I said, no, I didn't hit her. I said, I would never hit anybody. I'm, just, I'm, I'm that way. I'm not a man or a woman. I wouldn't hit them. He said, well, you know, the person she's staying with, because everybody had a roommate that because Coca-Cola doubled us up, said that she heard the fight in the uh, in the hallway and you hit her. Now, at one point, I, I, I think I slapped my hands or something like that, but I, I didn't hit her. I was just slapping my hand or something. And that's what this woman heard. But they wouldn't believe it. They wouldn't believe me. So they had to wait till Lori Thompson came into work. And they took her aside where she wasn't with me and asked her, did he hit you? And she said, Alex would never hit anybody. You know, we, we just had a little fight out there in the hallway, verbal fight. And uh, it turns out that her roommate was a nutcase. And they finally wound up sending her back home and we stayed. But they were, they got very apologetic after that, but they were ready to, you know, they literally were terrorizing me by making me stay in this basement for like an hour with the security guard standing there like this, you know. What and, if you had an argument with the nutcase? Uh, well, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I mean, my, my description what went on didn't count. The, yeah. Theirs did. And, and, and I learned a lesson from that, and that was it's really terrible to be a guy when you're accused of something because yep. everybody's going to believe the woman first. Yep. Now, I agree. We've gone through a time 
where cops wouldn't listen to women when they came in and said, my husband just beat me. They didn't want to hear from it. And women were treated negatively that way. But they've overcompensated the other way now to a point where if a guy is accused, God help us, you're ruined. Just yeah. accused, you're ruined. And I think there's something wrong about that. And yes, I have fall, uh, lately fallen out of love with, with Andrew Cuomo for any number of reasons. But And I understand he is a bully. And I understand he is terrible to work for. And there's a, there's a culture of intimidation that goes on in his office. Um, this is what I hear. This is not what I know. But that is not enough because he has political enemies to get rid of him. The way to get rid of him is when he runs next year, run somebody against him and get them nominated or uh, or don't vote for him, but let the people do it. It's only a year away anyway, you know? And um, I was telling Marjorie, if I, were, if I were Cuomo, I would just say, listen, folks, I've had enough of this crap. Uh, I'm going to stay in office. I'm not leaving. And I won't run for re-election next year. Okay? Now... Get off my case and let me do my job. Uh, and unless you can find a criminal act against me, leave me the hell alone. And I think that would be the answer. But, you know, it's just, I, I just find it it, 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 when I had this thing happen to me in Little Hummer, when I watched uh, the House on American Activity subcommittee when I was 14, 15 years old in San Francisco, this is so reminiscent of all of that. And that's accusation without proving the accusation and that the person who accuses is believed over the person who says, hey, I'm innocent. Um, you know, it's, it, it, it's hell these days. It's hell for guys. You know, I would, uh, if I were to go out on, if I were still dating, I would have a disclaimer. Every woman I went out with would have to sign ahead of time, you know. Uh, what do you think, uh, uh, Tony? You're, uh, uh, you're a New you Yorker. Know, what? Yeah, you know what? I always uh, really like Ed Koch, and I was reading up on Koch for uh, for a while, yeah. and I watched a documentary. I think you might have watched it. I have this. I forgot the name of it. Well, it was Koch, and they said in a documentary. And I remember as a kid, or say, asked my brother this in the late when Koch was running against Cuomo, his dad, in the late seventies, mm -hmm. with the mayor. Mm -hmm. They were in. They were taking. A, they did a smear campaign on Koch in the subways. They said, "Vote for Cuomo, not the homo." Well, wow. Koch, Koch they was never. Yeah. So I, yeah. I don't, I don't think they're. I always thought as a kid, when I read up on them, I think they. I mean, I know it's dirty politics, like you said, but I think, I don't think he's dead nice people. That's just my opinion. Because mm -hmm. okay. they would never own up to it, and Koch never talked to the father after that. Because he, well, I don't blame him, because Koch knew they did it, and they wouldn't own up to it. Yeah, I uh, that, that that if they did that, I don't remember it because I wasn't here for that. But uh, if they did that, it was a terrible thing. And the fact I was, the fact to was to be out. honest with you, though, uh, Koch was gay. Yeah, and I, and, it, and I was talking to Shecky in the documentary. He was so forced that he took the, uh, they gave him that girlfriend. I forgot the lady's name. They, just to get off the, uh, the gay rumors. Koch, they had him like. Was publicity. it Betty Furness? She, I think it was something like that. She was like a model or something. But Betty Furness. Oh, Bess Meyerson. Yeah, that's her. Bess yeah. Meyerson. Best I mean, Peterson. I like Koch because I, I like the way he told it as a kid. I like the way he told it the way it was. Yeah. And I kind of like that about the guy. Koch and I, I don't know. Cuomo seems swarmy to me. Like the last year, I don't know. It's almost like, I mean, at first, I, I don't know. There's something, maybe because I didn't like what the father did uh, with the smear campaign reading up on it. So I was never really in favor of him. Because I don't, I think that's kind of like, if he would do something like that, mm -hmm. then to me, then that's kind of like, you know, that's not right. Well, I'll, tell, I'll tell you something funny. I'll, I'll tell you something funny about Koch, is that uh, I there was a show on here in New York called the Fifty First State. It was a nightly show on Channel Thirteen, and people would they get people together to debate each other, and they had me on opposite Ed Koch, who was then I think a congressman, if I remember correctly. And uh, the question was, should we legalize marijuana? And of course, I was all for it. We should legalize marijuana, <laughs> blah 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 blah. And Koch was. Absolutely against it. He was. Yeah. Oh, he was adamantly against it. Did he debate you at all? Because he seemed really quick on his feet. Cut to about two or three years later, 
You know, he said, I think we should have more tests, too, to see if it is dangerous or not. I said, the first test we ever did was in 1906. How many more tests do you want? Yeah. You know, what did he say? Uh, and he said, oh, well, uh, we need more, you know, and he was against like it. it. Now, cut to about two or three years later, and I'm doing a show, I think it was at WMCA, and uh, they bring Ed Koch in as my guest. Oh, wow, so is. I'm there with Ed Koch, and I say, so, Ed, how do you feel about the legalization of marijuana? He says, oh, I'm all for it. Always have you been. said that? Yeah, <laughs> always said, have been. I love that, Koch. Yeah, I always said, have I, been. I said, well, you weren't when you debated me about two years ago on Channel 13. You were adamantly against it. Humma, 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 humma. I mean, he did a real Ralph Cramden on me, you know. <laughs> so, I, I mean... Know. It was, you know, so, I'm, you know, I, I mean, Koch was supposedly a very nice guy and everything like that, but he was pure politician through and through, you know. They will say something, and then a couple of years later will deny they ever said it. Well, that wasn't yeah. what I really meant. I said it sounded like you really meant it when you were talking about yeah, it. Yeah, I just, you know? I, I, I always kind of liked his spunk and how he was so quick. On his feet. Well, how do you oh, like how how, like how, that. how do you, how do you like how this uh, this miserable human be, excuse for a human being, uh, De Blasio, our mayor? Oh yeah, now he's looking like he's piling on him every day. Now. He's piling see, on him every day because he's always like, hated him, left. and he's now saying, "Well, I'm forming an exploratory committee about running for governor." I was going to ask you. I was going to check it out. Do you think he'll run? Well, he I, I think he'll try to run. He tried to run for president of the United States. How did that go for him? Yeah, I don't think you he'll know. win state, Alex, right? Because that's too big. I don't think they'll vote for him out of the five boroughs. Uh, he, I could be wrong, though. Well, uh, Shecky tells me he follows de Blasio more than I do. There's a lot of corruption there. Yeah, I went to visit him a few weeks. He knows, Yeah, He does follow he, a lot of it, too. He knows yeah, a lot what's going he on. He said, I'd like to know where some of the offshore accounts are, is what Shecky basically says, you know. Yeah. Let the money go. That's right. Yeah. So you know what, Alex? They could. You could be right. They could be politically maneuvering him out, Cuomo, to place somebody they can control in there. Yeah. Well, they, they, uh, they, they really, uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, you know, some of these people, especially a lot of the Democrats, they all want to be governor, and they'd like to push him out of the way because it'd be the fourth term for him. Right. Okay. And he would, and he uh, would win going away. Their attitude is, push, yeah. why don't you make room for the rest of us? You know. And 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 also they just dislike him because he's a bully and because of he, with the way he acts, and so they're all out to get him. You yeah, know? they want him out of the way for some. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I, I know that with this smoke there might be fire, so I can't say they're lying. So I, I can't really elaborate. Look, on it. maybe if he did it, then show me proof. You haven't shown yeah. me any proof yet. It's only women coming forth with stories, and yeah, I don't I don't necessarily do trust people in this atmosphere who come forward with a story. Let's prove them right, okay? You know, and let's not immediately prove him wrong and and, and pronounce him wrong. I mean, now, I, will they impeach him? Is that look, what they're trying look, to between do you and me, he probably did all of it. Most of it, to me, were minor infractions of dating, okay? Uh, one of them, the hand under the breast, maybe you can argue that was bad, but the rest of them were just sex talk or sex questions or things like that, and then they go, and I felt very uncomfortable. Well, come on, you know, I felt uncomfortable in my job just talking to my boss, you know. So, I mean, I just don't, I, I, I just, it's not, it, it first let the people do their job and find out what went on. Come back with a report, and then if they say, hey, he did all these things, then I think he should do the right thing and quit. Okay, resign. He's not going to resign either. You hear me? They're taking the calls because they got to do. He don't do the live anymore. Well, I like what Dan Meyer. Time. What Dan Meyer said last night, uh, and, and that was that uh, you know, um, uh, it, it, it give him uh, for every woman that accuses him, the age of being able to get vaccinations goes down five years. Well, they're on yeah. sixty, so we go to fifty-five. <laughs> no, we're down to fifty now. We're down to fifty. I think we're down to 50, oh, aren't we? 50, 50. 50 in Texas now. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know what to make. You know, I don't know what to believe anymore. It's, so, uh, it's a political, you know, you just don't know what. To me, it's almost like... If well, you, know, I, 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 you know something? I'll tell you. In any other atmosphere, this would be a very minor story. But the fact yeah. is, there's no news out there. Okay? 
Biden's doing all the right stuff. Nobody's really doing anything. Million vaccinations. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's doing he's doing what he's got to do. So MSNBC can't go there on, on every hour and say today's another wonderful day. <laughs> you know. Uh, oh, everything's perfect. We have nothing to talk about. Let's run cartoons. You know, we, 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 we're, we're, the, we're owned by the same people that own the Cartoon Network. Let's run some cartoons since we don't have any news. No. What they got to do is find a story. So they take this, this story and make it, you know, which is a, maybe a festering little pimple, and they turn it into a big, giant, gaping sore. You know, and... Uh, and then these these guys like Schumer and, and Gillibrand and Nadler and oh, uh, Ocasio Cortez came out against him. I mean, people, you know, wait. Can't you wait and find out where the truth lies? You know, maybe he is a goddamn liar, but let's prove him a liar before we put the noose around his neck. So. Anyway, I find it. And he, I, I bet you he's a hot-headed guinea, too. You could see, like the brother. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. He's no. ready to blow any minute. You can oh, see no. no, he's, he, he's, he's, uh, he's supposedly a, piece, a real piece of work. Okay. Yeah, he's one of the I could see him ready. I'm ready to hit, he won't explode, but you, he's like really, you could see he's stubborn. Anybody else probably would have stepped out. Well, they say he's a bully, you know. Uh, and and that's uh, that's the biggest thing against him is that he's a bully, and so all these people are ready to jump on him mm -hmm. the minute they can do it. It's not like anybody was there to when he was going to fall. Nobody was there to catch him, okay? Uh, and uh, it's uh, you know I just I just I feel very uncomfortable with the whole thing, and you know I I'm a I'm a little sympathetic towards him only in that I feel he saved my life, okay. By his actions in the state of New York, the good actions he took, he saved my life. I'm alive right now. I've got the vaccination in me. I'm probably not going to come down with it. Okay, uh, and and I and I I, I I hold him responsible for that. Well, you're going no no, Kevin. What? He didn't save your life. You saved your life. Right. Well, don't he, don't say that. Well, he I, he saved, he saved your you life. Saved your life. You did your own shit to save your life. Yeah. Yeah, what, Alan? He saved your life as much as Trump saved your life. Trump, Trump financed vaccines, you know, with, with the U.S. money to make the vaccines ahead of time. And when they get approved, that we could start distribution right away. Yeah, but he so, under he but, underfinanced them. He didn't order uh, enough. He, he, you I'm followed guidance about, by the government. You followed guidance by everybody else too. You you didn't he, nobody nobody in particular saved your life. You just followed the right <laughs> guidance. That's all. Well, I, I'm just trying to make a point, kind of like what Kevin said. He, well, you know, but on the other hand, you. he he could have gone on the air every day and gone, ah, there's no problem here. This is Texas. And you See, wouldn't. You wouldn't have followed it. Don't wear a mask. Right. Wait a minute. Don't wear a mask. Don't do well, this. Don't do that. Were. And then it would have gotten even to be a worse infection, and I would have gotten infected by other people. Well, no, because you, you would have listened to somebody that. else that would have said something different. Well, all I'm saying is, is that I think that he he did a good job of trying to tell people let let's curb the yeah, let's I'm bend not, the I'm curve, not, I'm and not we did that away from him. But you know, I I have you know I have a problem with you saying that. He saved your life. I think you right. saved your life. Well, I think. Thanks right. for the compliment. You're uh, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I agree. Let's with talk. Kevin. Let's talk about the border. <laughs> I've been watching the shit going on down the border. Okay. It flooded in. Did you see any oh, of the borders oh, of this stuff going on? In down fact, there? they refer to it on uh, on uh, MSNBC as the border oh, yes. shit. So I, I haven't. Been, I haven't been watching NB, NB, MSNBC. I've watched a little bit of CNN today and then a couple other channels, but. It's a mess down there. I think it's always been a mess. Well, uh, no, I think yeah, it, but you know what? They're, they're, it's getting it's getting crazy down there. They got they got. Why all of a sudden are are there rafts moving people across the Rio Grande, fifteen twenty at a time, with no no one watching them at all except TV cameras? Well, I think part of the problem is okay is that. Uh, under under Trump, he took a just a, an absolute inhumane stance, yeah. and it was just an impossible thing for anybody to try and get across. All right, there were too many people watching him, and so on. I think now they're doing it because they feel that this president is a m little more sympathetic to them, 
and maybe they can get away with it. So the numbers increase because there's a new administration in Washington. And I think if it had been another Republican administration in Washington, they'd still have a problem right now because well, they it, would. Yeah, yeah. The, the numbers haven't even caught up to 2019 supposedly, but they're getting there. Yeah, and I don't know. I just I don't understand why all of a sudden. And I, and I do kind of understand because they had some interviews mm -hmm. and they say that, you know, mm -hmm. they, they, they're wearing shirts that say, Mr. Biden, please let us in and the whole bit. But, <clears throat> you know, I don't understand why they're not running the boats up and down the river like they used to. All yeah. of a sudden they're gone. I don't, I don't get that. Oh, you mean the, 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 uh, uh, border patrol. Yeah, yeah. The, border, the border patrol and all that, yeah. you know, we still got the freaking wall there. And then they had that accident last week, you know, that mm -hmm. car full of 27, 27 immigrants in that car. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they, you know, took a, a torch to a section of that goddamn wall and knocked it down and drove right through it. So good for that wall. Yeah. Uh, Alan, you got um, your Alan. Yeah, it's out of control oh, okay. down there. And, you know, I... You know, I, you may not like what I want to hear, but I think it's, I think it's crazy. I, you know, they need to stop that shit. Yeah. So the, the border, I don't mind people coming in, but they ought to come in, you know, the right way. Yeah. Okay. So the border patrol made an announcement on this, Kevin, somewhere today. I saw it in the news, and they said that a lot of uh, that, you know, that um, a lot of the Mexicans that are coming over, extra Mexicans are coming over now because we have the vaccine and they have very limited there. And so they're getting desperate for the vaccine. And I'm hearing different. I'm hearing they're coming from Guatemala or whatever, Central America, they're coming up because they're, and I understand that. And it's a, that's what they should do, but they should get in line and come across the right way, not I across on a boat. And that's, well, that's you know, I think we I, I, should be I, I, still running yeah. up and down the rivers and stopping. These I, I think all along we've handled this, this situation wrong. It, yeah, I you agree. know, I mean, if Find we right if way. we made it highly illegal for any American businesses to hire illegal aliens, who, in other words, not just a slap on the wrist, not just you know a five hundred dollar yeah, fine, true. but you gave them a big fine, like ten grand, twenty grand, they wouldn't hire them. The, they wouldn't hire them. There'd be no reason for them to no come up here because there wouldn't be any jobs. Okay, so you you know you what you do is you you know you we we put out the 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 honey. And they're being attracted to the honey. We've got Let to somehow come stop. Over, get their permits, get their permit to come over and do their work and then go back the whole right, bit. You right, know, the, right. Do it the right way. That's fine. You know, right. I, I don't have a problem with that because we need those people to do that. But when stuff. they know, when they know that there's somebody in San Rafael, California, is going to drive by uh, that certain corner that I always saw the immigrants standing on waiting for yeah, people to pick Depot them up. Or whatever, yeah. yeah, and take them up to their place to do some gardening. I mean, those people should get fined, yeah. you know, ten thousand dollars, and they'll stop they going and getting those people. Yeah, they and don't. They don't have the right. They don't have enough people to find individuals. They can't even find Home Depot or Lowe's for encouraging those people that the day just, laborers. It, it gives the Republicans, like I was saying the other night, it gives the Republicans more fucking ammo to sit there and yap about it during their debates. That's what you know, they, doing. they sit there and they say, oh, you know, th these are more people coming in. They're going to get their checks and they get free this and free well, that. Well, that's that's a, that's a, that's they a, don't get they free don't get. That. I know they don't, but <laughs> that's what they say. And they they right. feed that crap into people's oh. heads. And mm. if they're coming across the border and they look at that on TV, that gets fed into all these other people's heads that are just sitting there watching TV. Say, oh, look, yeah, they'll look what the Republicans say that they're getting that shit, you know, and. And, and it just constantly just feeds the beast yep. and it needs to stop so that that can't be fed. Right. You know, right. How the hell do you do it? Uh, I, you Put them know, back you, in the boats. Well, all I'm saying is that I think <laughs> if, if we, if we did something about that, okay. About, about people being able to hire people here, I think uh, it would it would slow it down because they wouldn't be trying to cross the border because if they got if they did cross the border and they couldn't find work, you know I mean I you see I feel sad for some of these people because some of these people are coming to the United States they make money they go they come to say I talk about San Rafael California there's an area in San Rafael where all these immigrants live and they live maybe ten fifteen twenty to a room okay to an apartment. Because it's street, 
is they're trying to save money so that they can send what money they do make back to their families. Now, their and I, and I, can, now. I consider that a pretty noble sacrifice, if you want <clears throat> my opinion. You know? No, I agree. I mean, I, I'm not saying that they're not in trouble. I, yeah. I'm more than, this is the land of opportunity. Let them come in, but come in the right way. Well, that, that's right. But what I'm saying is, is that still we've got this problem with these people being here. And they're they're sending doing it to send money back to their families. Not all of them. Some of them are a problem, you know. Yeah. But uh, a, a, the vast majority of them are just people who came here to try and earn a living because there <clears> is <throat> money to be made in the United States. Jeff. Yeah, I want to just mention a little bit about this. My my uh, father mm -hmm. and his older brothers mm -hmm. and his parents left. Europe and came to the United States. Mm -hmm. my, my father was a baby at the time, so he really didn't has any knowledge about it because he was less than a, he was born right the day they came over here, so to speak. But my grandfather, he was a smart guy, so he took his shave, his beard, yeah. and shaved it off so he would look like a real American. Mm -hmm. And of course, when he got off the uh, the boat, I think it was somewhere in New York. I forget that they would send all these people. They sent him back and said, "You don't look like the right guy." Mm. That you know, this was not. You know, you say, "Well, it should be done the right way." Well, it wasn't the right way then, and he yeah. made a big mistake. Okay, but you know. That was a big deal where you had to get on a boat. It was totally informal. It was... But, you know, uh, that was also a time... You know, organized. Today, it's, a, it's Mexico. The, the, that was also a time where we embraced immigration. Of course. You know, we don't want I mean, now. New York City is a city built on immigrants. I mean, the you had it, 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 well. Is. This city more than any other. This was the magnet. Okay, okay. this was the magnet. You had an Italian neighborhood, a Jewish neighborhood, a black neighborhood, uh, you know, a, a Swedish neighborhood, uh, you know, a whatever neighborhood, and and uh, a Spanish neighborhood, uh, and and so it was it was a cultural melting pot, if you will, and it was embraced because these are the people that made this city great, you know. And um, uh, we, we used to look at, at immigrants as something very positive, very good, you know. And uh, now it's like, uh, hey, these people are coming up from Mexico, only coming here because they want a life better than the one they got down there, and they hear it's pretty good here. I got news that? for them. There's wrong. nothing wrong with that, though. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I mean, my, my daughter married a Mexican. Mm -hmm. My sister's married to a Mexican. I got nothing against them. I just think that. And they will tell you the same thing. I came over here the right way. I got naturalized. I got, you know, the whole thing. I went through the whole process. My mother is an immigrant from Germany. She went through the whole process. Right. It's the way you come in. You don't get on a boat, sneak in, and then work your way through the system backwards. The question is... You not even work your way through the system. You just work the system. The question is, however... Do we make the process harder or easier? Or is it too hard already? Well, it's hard now because it's all clogged up. Yeah. Because they're trying, you know, the, the problem that we have right now, I think, is that they're so desperate that they're sending their kids over. Yeah, I mean, right. these are 13 to 18-year-old kids that they're shoving across and hoping that those kids are going to get in and then they can follow them over. Yeah. Right? That's what I think is happening. And, you know, when you're trying to separate a kid from their parents or their mother or something like that, that's where the, the, the tear jerk strings come so, in. So don't we need to have, a, isn't a sense of compassion called for right now in that situation? Right, right there, there's your sense of compassion because you, we don't want to separate that family. So right. they shove the kids over and now we got to bring the parents over yeah. to put those families back together, which is not the right way to do it. Yeah. They're forcing that to happen. And that's what I don't think is the right way to do it. Come through the gate. Register yourself. Go through the right way. Yeah. 
Then you can go through and uh, learn the uh, Constitution. A and then, lot of Mexicans I don't think they drowned know. in the Rio Grande trying to swim it. Correct. Yeah. I mean, that's Every desperate. Year. Oh, there's a, there's a train that comes up from, I think, Bolivia or somewhere. It's called the Death Train. Yep. And yeah. it, it is a very dangerous train because they get on this train, they ride on the top of it and the bottom of it and everything. People are thrown off of it every day and dying as a result of it. So are you going to really feel so negative about people who are willing to risk their lives to be here? No. You know? That's not that's not the point really. I don't feel negative about yeah, those people, right. but we got to find a way to to do it right. Either process them or find a way to let them in the right way. Mm -hmm. We don't have that down yet. Right. Nope. Right. I don't think you're ever going to have it down. Yeah. Anyway. I don't think we're ever going to have it down because of the, the amount of people that want to come in here. Like, I understand. I understand, like, what you're saying, Kevin, which is fine. You know, I understand. I guess I kind of agree with it. But also, like, you have to put, actually try to get into their frame of mind where they may feel some of these people, they're that desperate yeah. to come in. That means they probably don't have anything. See, Trump started this whole, and this is not about you, Kevin. Trump started this whole negative thing on the, the borders of this. He made it sound like it was only happening in the last, say, four or five years. See, I think he started such negativity towards immigrants that he made everybody so, like, more self-aware than we're... Like, this has been going on for 20 years, 30 years. Yeah. It's like, what's changed? But he, he just amped it up more to make it like, oh, God, the borders are horrible. Like, he he tapped into a lot of shit that well, and that's people bought I mean, into. Not, I don't mean it towards you, but he mm -hmm. really tapped into some... To, to the to the person's mind where hey he's right he i don't know trump did a lot of negative shit well, that's what i mean by feeding the beast oh, I mean, a lot of negative shit he did nothing but negative shit negative he yeah puts, he, he puts that stuff people. on there all these people are cartel yeah. they're not all cartel no but he but if they were a car, if like they were cartel they would be what you're they, saying. if they were cartel they would be able to get green cards yeah they, exactly they'd okay. have to walk yeah. in with a suit on that LaGuardia right? airport they'd yeah. fly over yeah yeah. With phony IDs and everything all done up. It's funny. In the old days when they used to have Ellis Island here, active, where all mm -hmm. the immigrants would come, they would send all the immigrants to Ellis Island. Well, not all the immigrants. If you had money, That's you right. had power, yeah. you had influence, the boat dropped yes. you off in Manhattan. I believe they that took box. the rest yeah. over. Am I right, yeah. uh, Jeff? Yep. They took the rest yeah, over to Ellis right. Island. That's where my father came in, you know. You know, Alex, I was getting actually, I was reading a book on the Holocaust a couple of years ago, and they were saying in the book that a lot when they had it, when the when the Jewish families had a feeling that something was going to happen, mm -hmm. if you had money, they were getting their families out. There were Jewish people who couldn't afford it, and they were stuck there. Well, they didn't know uh, the just just remember was. this: during World, just before World War II, Hitler said that he didn't want the Jews in Germany, and that he would deport them and send them to any country which would have them. And only one country took a million Jews. What do you think that country was? Wasn't that Spain? It was absolutely, you're right, Charlie, it was Spain. Nobody to this day can figure out why Franco did it because, you know, he was one of Hitler's pals. But he yeah. did it and, and saved a lot of lives as a result of that. Meanwhile, what country wouldn't take a single didn't Jew? Take anybody. The United States. Yeah. You know. So I, as a Jew, I'm supposed to sit here and love this country? You know, you want to talk about six million dead Jews? The United States had like something to do with it because they could have maybe cut it down to a half, you know, down, yeah. to, down to five million by taking a million of them like Franco did. I mean, how many bloodlines were lost because yeah. they didn't take I mean, when, they, when Franco took them, he said, okay, you can come to Spain, but I want you to leave as soon as possible because uh, I can't afford to keep you here. You know, I, the country can't take it economically, but I'm, I'm rescuing you. And, and a lot of these people, like my, a good friend of mine, uh, uh, he and his family went to Cuba. And then they got, American, uh, they got Cuban citizenship and then came into the United States with Cuban citizenship because they couldn't come in as Jewish refugees. So, you know, we've, we've, we've really been a shitty country a lot. Right, Josh? I mean, that was... I mean, we but have our certain failures for sure. Yeah. I mean, and but despite all of them, I think that you know we've evolved into something great, something incredible, and the longest-lasting, most successful 
democracy in yeah. history, and I would argue that we are continually on a path of continuous improvement and expansion of equalization. Now, I didn't say it moved fast. It moves very slow, sometimes at a glacier's pace, but it always goes, um, you know, despite setbacks or whatever. It's ever yeah. expanding, so yeah. that argument can be made as well. But, you know, we go through... The United States goes through uh, a few periods every century. I don't know. Let's on average of I've told you about this before. We've talked about it on Saturdays, you know, 40 to 60 years of, you know, these very nat nativism, you know, America first. I mean, and this this whole America first thing that Trump had is is not new. The the Ku Klux Klan had it in the 1920s. It was one of their big mm -hmm. slogans. You know, it was very anti-immigrant then. I mean, you know, the 1880s, late 1890s was very anti-immigrant, um, especially in New York. Uh, you know, I mean, there you know, there's a lot of that stuff that goes on. We have these cycles come and go. So yeah. Uh, one day, hopefully, we can break them, right? Or at least mm -hmm. spread them out further. Ray, you've been quiet. You haven't said a word, as a matter of fact. Anything, any thoughts on this? Yeah. I think it's a non-starter. I don't think it's an issue. I mean, these people come in. They're desperate. They need, they need something. They're doing the work that other people don't want to do. We have way bigger problems than this. Yeah, but, I mean, it's still a problem. You know, I mean, it, it's gotten pretty bad down there at the border in the last couple of weeks, and it's because people are seeing an opportunity or want an imagined opportunity, and they're they're taking advantage of it. You know, yeah, and they've been doing that on and off for since I was a little kid. It's never yeah, hasn't yeah, changed. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what's happened. I mean, I, what's what's been know, the, you know when when my grandparents uh, came, my grandparents and great grandparents came here. They came to Ellis Island. I have the paperwork. All they had to do is name a relative or a friend that live in, lived in New York, and they were on, in. Yeah. And that went on until when? Well, right didn't, we, you know, didn't we take a great pride in this country and our yeah. ability I mean, to embrace yeah. uh, immigration? The only time we gave a shit about this was, over, you know, maybe a 20-year period. Yeah. Before that, it, it was an issue. This is this is a non-starter to me. Yeah. It's a deflection of well, what's important. Well, my point was I mean, my point was is what what is where is the bottleneck? Why are these people getting all jammed up down there? Then, what is keeping them yeah. from not getting processed? Or I, I think no it may be. I hate to say this, and uh, uh, well, I don't hate to say it, but I think it's a residual problem from the Trump administration. Yeah, I well, think that the fact sure. that they they well, they, they the, closed the, the, it. The other the other issue is then why isn't Joe Biden saying something about it and doing something about it? You know, if, if that's that's the other part is, although he's only been there in fifty days or whatever. There, there is a problem how much, down there how much, has to be addressed. It, let, let, let me be honest about it. How much has this guy had on his plate? No, oh, I understand. You know, I and, totally understand. And I'm sure he's talking to people about this, and they're trying to figure out what to do about I it and what so. the best answers are to it. But they don't want to, I'm sure they don't want to take a Trump uh, uh, way of doing it. So no, they're no. looking for another way of doing it that is more humane and more realistic, you know. Yes, I just, Ray. That, Ray? I'm, just ha I'm really happy about the fact that um, they're doing something to reunite these kids yeah. with their yeah. families. Yeah. That, to me, is way more right. important. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know, you know, like, put words in Kevin's mouth or whatever, but, but I also took his, his, what he was saying was that he's not against really a number of people you know, moving to America, but I think what he was saying was it is a problem they can't just sneak in. They got to check in at the gate, mm -hmm. or or you open yourself up to a lot of issues. I mean, you can't just sneak into the game and sit anywhere you want. No, that's I mean, fine. I agree. I agree. I agree. You know, so does, I, I think he, that's he kind of what he meant. No, I agree. I mean, they they got to set something you know. up. It's ridiculous. Did you see the videos of those right. young guys just climbing right over the fence without a problem? Yeah. A couple right. days ago, they just like scale. Well, I, I think I, 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 the reason I yeah, said I think I, th I think this is part of the sins of the uh, of the Trump ears, because he was so nasty about it that when it lightened up at all, it looked like there was a man who had some kind of humanity to him who became president. 
they all said, this is our opportunity. Let's yeah. head for the border now. And yeah. it wasn't, oh, so you know, and, and he was the first one. He was the first tradition. one to say, nobody, don't come here yet, okay? We're not ready yeah. for you. And yet they still came, right. you know. Yes, what were you going to yeah, say, so John? It's, it's a bit of a manufactured issue, right, that, that was almost left for him out of spite in some ways, you know, I'm sure. I mean, you know, from like Trump to Biden. It's like wait for the cops I mean, to leave. You know, if, right. if you're going mean, sure. to if you're gonna close down the border tighter than a cow's ass at fly time, as my father used to call it, uh, you know, you're going to... Uh, you're going to inhibit people from doing it. But on the other hand, we took their kids, you know, and we put them in untenable yeah. situations. And so what we were doing there was totally inhumane. So somewhere between, you know, not causing a mass panic at the border and solving the problem, there's got to be a sweet spot somewhere. Yeah, all I was saying is that, you know, put those guys back in yeah. the river have them stop going across the river because that's a dangerous way to do it. Have them go back through the gate, and that that's the way it should be done. I mean, you know, that's all I was saying. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah. it's true. Otherwise, it's better if we at least are keeping track of things. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous what's going on. I agree with that. John Larkin, you just joined us. Do you have anything to say about this at all? Fucking complicated. It is complicated. It's probably one of the most complicated questions we have, and it was exacerbated by Trump because yeah. of what Trump did. There was a, there was this complete inhumane thing that went on with the kids, and yeah. and and we don't want to see that happen again. And I think Biden is taking his time with this because he doesn't want to do something that's going to cause that kind of situation to happen again. Yeah. You know? uh, so you got to give should, him, we, we got to give him credit forget. for that, huh? We should never forget what Trump did. Yeah. Is that he actually used the kids to scare his parents to leave? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, that was a pretty nasty oh, yeah. way to to use kids as a yeah. as a poison pill. Ray, and you know what what he did too to make that even worse is it used to be that. Uh, they would allow illegals to even come and pick up the kids sort of as a pseudo adoption while the parents were getting processed. Yeah. He, he set it up so that if those people showed up to pick up the kids, they'd get sent back. So yeah. nobody showed up to pick up the kids anymore. Yeah. No relatives, no friends. Yeah. I mean, that was just I mean, cool. his approach was to fuck you. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm yeah. glad you brought this up, Kevin. It's something we really haven't gotten to discussing. And I guess right now it becomes a point of discussion again because... It's becoming a major problem again. Uh, but uh, it's, it. Uh, you know, if I were president, I wouldn't know how I'd handle the situation. You yeah, know? it's not easy. It's not an easy one, and you want to do it in the most humane way possible because these may not be Americans, but they are human beings, and that's the one thing we tend to forget when we look at, at these immigrants. Well, yeah, and, and we are the land of opportunity, so come on in and yeah. help us out. Yeah. Yeah, and they have family here, most of them, and there's you know where they live. They're they're going through hell. You know, this just sucks. Charlie yeah. Wallace, thank you for being with us this evening. I appreciate it. Josh, your call always welcome. This is yours, Alan. Jeff, great to have you here. Kevin, uh, another brilliant uh, topic you brought up. Uh, thank you to uh, Tony for being with us, and and uh, of course uh, the wonderful and uh, attractive Ray Renati. A television star, commercial maker. Uh, Trucker Steve, thank you. And John Larkin, you were in a little late, but always good to have you here. Everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a wave, wave goodbye at you. Okay, there they go, folks. That's the citizen panel. That's what they were. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll form one again. Uh, well, Monday we do a thing at 4 o'clock in the afternoon with a bunch of really nice people who call. We do that on Facebook, and then uh, again on uh, on uh, uh, what do you call it? On on Tuesday, we're back here again, uh, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And, and by the way, be safe out there, and make sure you wear a mask, even if you're in Texas.